I'll be talking about serverless computing, right? How we can um, manage serverless workloads, which would be great because uh, we want, we, many of us here are one way or another involved in trying to enable developers to do stuff, right? And serverless is one of the great examples of that. Um, now, quick note here before I start. When I say serverless, I don't mean only and exclusively functions as a service, right? I don't mean Lambda only. I mean serverless. I don't, I don't, I don't think about servers. I don't know how they run. They just exist. Things just happen, right? So not about Lambdas. That's the important thing. Uh, now, quick introduction. This is me. This is me Q&A section. So ask me questions. Uh, I work in a bound that, 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 that does not matter, really. And this does not matter either. What does matter is serverless computing, right? And um, there are many ways you can describe it, but my way to describe serv uh, serverless computing is a developer saying, here's my source code, run it. Don't ask me any questions, right? Or unnecessary questions. This is the code I want it to run. And I want it not only to run, I want it to scale up, I want it to scale down, because we all want to be efficient, we don't want to waste resources for no good reason, and so on and so forth, right? So run my code, don't ask me questions, scale up and down, and probably quite a few other things. Now, uh, if you were to assemble yourself a kind of serverless solutions today, meaning not using ready-to-go server services like Google Cloud Run or Azure Container Apps or Lambda, AWS, or whatever you're using, right? You're probably going to make some default choices, like you're going to use Kubernetes for serverless because you're in KubeCon. Uh, you're probably going to choose uh, Knative because it's an engine that allows you to scale your applications automatically and to queue requests when it scales to zero and quite a few other things. If you're not familiar with, if, if, if you have any, Let's start with this. Feel free to interrupt me at any time. If you're not familiar with something I'm talking about, just let me know. You don't need to wait for the end of the talk. Um, what else, right? You need a way to build your applications uh, to create those containers that will be run by Knative. You're probably going to pick something like Canico or maybe Shipwright or something like that that works in that Kubernetes clusters, that takes that code, builds container images, uh, you're going to try to figure out how your applications can communicate with each other and how they can communicate with other uh, things like databases. You're probably going to pick Dapper. I think that you had at least one session about Dapper before and so on and so forth, right? Now, since I'm too lazy, I'm not going to assemble all those tools. What I'm going to use today is something called Open Function. Any of you familiar with Open Function? No? Only a few. Anyways, think of open function as being a wrapper and some glue between projects I mentioned and quite a few others, right? It collects best of breed type of tools that collectively provide some kind of serverless uh, functionality. And uh, <clears throat> here is my definition using open function, right? It might look scary, like kind of more than five lines of YAML, but it's actually relatively simple considering what it does, right? Uh, among important things there, I'm saying, okay, you see that image over there? There's an image, I want you to, uh, and this is not, I'm not saying here I want you to run this image. I want you to build this image and run it, based on my source code, right? Uh, here are the image credentials, because uh, you need to push that image to some registry, right? And you cannot do it with, without some credentials. We will later need to figure out how are we going to get those credentials, but I'm, I'm getting there. This is the build section that I'm saying, okay, so build, uh, use uh, Builder Go because uh, this is now using Buildpox. There are many different ways you can configure it. Uh, and since my application is written in Go, it will use Go Builder to build my container image. Couple of environment variables doesn't matter. What does matter here is that use this uh, repository. That's where your source code of your application is. Get it from there, build that image. Uh, this is the branch main. A uh, few things, like I want to use Dapper to communicate with, uh, let's say, a database, which is good, it's good simplifies everything. Um, 
and uh, nothing really matters much. Okay, maybe a port 88. My application, the code of my application, will be running on port 88, right? There are a few other things, but that's the gist of it, right? Th this thing is doing a lot, and those 30 something lines of YAML should be relatively straightforward for anybody, any person, no matter how experienced you are in those tools to define this, right? It's relatively easy, straightforward, considering what it does. Now, so that's, that's kind of great. But then we have a couple of questions, right? Because uh, here's the secret. Serverless still have servers, right? That's uh, a very unfortunate name for that. So we need to figure out where will that application run, right? I need a place where it will run. I need a Kubernetes cluster in my case. Uh, but it's not only that. It's not only about having a Kubernetes cluster. That Kubernetes cluster needs to have stuff installed. It needs to have Knative. It needs to have uh, Shipwright, um, so on and so forth. It, a bunch of things need to be configured. Uh, some secrets. You remember that push secret? I, I need to have secrets so that I know how do I push to a registry, right? How do I pull from a registry? How do I do this? How do I do that, right? So it's not just having a cluster. It's about having, let's say, serverless ready cluster with everything that is required for that simple YAML to run somehow. And uh, another thing that is important is that uh, there, are, there is no such thing as stateless applications, right? The, such a thing does not exist. A part of your application might be stateless, but states always exist somehow, somewhere. So we're probably going to need some form of a database or maybe file system, right? So we need to figure out how am I going to enable developers also to, to do that? How they, can they say, not only that I want to run this serverless application, I want it to connect to a database, and by the way, that database should be, let's say, Postgres or something, right? I want to make it easy for everybody. So uh, instead of just focusing, uh, now again, I'm repeating, this is not using Google Cloud Run, right? This is us assembling serverless solution. And for us to have serverless solution, we need a way how to run serverless applications. We need a place where we are going to run serverless applications, because there are servers. And we need uh, uh, some kind of database as a service, because database is always there, one way or another, right? And to make it slightly more complicated, all of that needs to be somehow secure, right? At least a bit secure. Just a tiny bit of security. Um, anyway, so let's, uh, by the way, I don't like speaking much of slides. I like showing things. So this will be more a demo than a talk, but you can ask me anything. Uh, let, let's, start, let's start talking about uh, uh, first, where are we going to run application? And remember, I'm making everything as a service, right? I want everybody to be able to do whatever they need to do. So I have here defined. Uh, AWS2 YAML, right? This is my definition of a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, and I'm now a developer, right? And everybody can write this. Because somebody else, some other me, defined this as a service as well. Basically, essentially, what I'm saying here, by the way, I'm using Crossplane for this. If you're not familiar with Crossplane, then you should be ashamed and leave the room immediately. Uh, kidding. Don't, don't leave. Be ashamed only. Uh, so what I'm saying here is that I created a new API interfacing my Kubernetes cluster, a new CRD, that is called cluster claim. Anybody can create cluster claim. Uh, and with labels that somebody can define, OK, where do you want that cluster? In this case, I want it in AWS. I want it to be EKS, right? I have implementations. We call it compositions. It could be in Azure, right? Or it could be in Google, or whatever I chose as an operator, the other me, to implement, right? Now. I, I, I need certain things in that cluster or parameters of that cluster. I want it to be medium size because I don't know AWS. I don't know what's T2 something something, but I do know that it should be bigger than small and then smaller than big. I want to start with three nodes. I want to have those namespaces in that cluster. And now comes the important part. I want to specify which application should be automatically running that cluster, right? Without me doing additional this or that. And uh, I need open function. That's what I showed you before. Uh, and I will need external secrets. Now, the external secrets are important because in that newly created cluster, I need some credentials. You remember that uh, registry, right? The, I need somehow to push it. I need that secret automatically to be there. And uh, so I want the cluster to use external secrets operator or ESO. 
that essentially the short version of it is get something called registry uh, out from uh, AWS Secret Manager in this case, uh, create, convert, it, convert that into a Kubernetes secret in that cluster that does not yet exist, put it in this namespace, and it's going to be Docker Config JSON because that's how you configure uh, secret to be container image registry friendly. And that newly created cluster should get AWS credentials from the existing cluster, from the management cluster uh, itself, right? Now, um, if you look at the slides, I don't have much time, but you will hear, see here all the, all the magic, all the YAML. There is a repository that I used uh, to define all that, what's happening behind the scenes. It's thousands of lines of YAML. I don't want to depress you that early in KubeCon. Uh, but you can check it afterwards, right? Uh, the, the, what does matter is that I defined what is behind that interface, right? All the subnets and VPCs and cluster and this or that. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, uh, just a second. Da, da, da. Okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, create the cluster. kubectl dash dash namespace. Now, I'm right now looking at the management cluster. This is not where my application will be running. This is just a server from where we go and do stuff. I want to apply whatever is defined in this file, the file that I showed you. Boom. Uh, I injected it into management cluster as a custom resource, a custom resource and I can do something like trace, cluster claim, uh, cluster, the name is two, namespace 18, there we go. And you can see that all the stuff that is required for that cluster to run both AWS resources and uh, applications in that cluster and this or that. All that is happening right now. Uh, and it will be eventually done. Now, I don't have enough time. It takes approximately 20 minutes to create uh, AWS cluster itself. So I will skip this. Actually, I will delete what I just created. And the reason is very simple why I will delete. And uh, the reason is this. Um, I actually already created a cluster last night before I went out drinking. So the same thing here, but fully operational, except the open function, which is going insane for reasons I cannot uh, explain, but imagine that that's not happening. Everything, my cluster is up and running. It's ready. It's waiting for me. Brilliant, right? Uh, and I can prove it to you. Uh, I can do something like, you uh, know, export. Oh. What's missing? No, no, it's here. <laughs> Over there, uh, that's not my problem. I have no idea what's going on. It will eventually work. Eventual consistency. Yeah. I'm It wouldn't be the first time I explained without screen. Hey, there we go. Brilliant. Thank you. OK. So I'm going to get uh, point my cube cutler to the newly created cluster, the one that I created before I went drinking. And uh, if you take a look at uh, cross-plane uh, the, the, the cross system uh, namespace, exactly, if you go get secrets, uh, you will see that credentials for my AWS were automatically copied. I can communicate with my secrets manager, which is great. Uh, if I go and say kubectl get uh, clusters, cluster secret stores, this is external secrets manager. It's already configured to communicate with my AWS uh, secrets manager, which is also great. If I go to the production namespace, kubectl uh, dash dash namespace production, get uh, external secrets. And uh, one external secret was created, two of them. Ignore the first one, that's a surprise for later. Push secret was created and uh, the secret was pulled from secret manager and uh, I can push secret, I can now push my application, stuff like that. I'm ready, right? I'm ready to deploy that open function manifest to this cluster. Almost, right? 
Another thing I need is a database, right? There is always a database, somehow, somewhere. And uh, I prepared another one. This is an, it's still cross-plane. There will be not cross-plane soon. Uh, this is following similar pattern. Hey, developers, whenever you want to create a database, you don't need to open Jira tickets because I hate Jira. I believe that Jira should disappear from the planet. Um, create something called SQL claim. It's easy. Define some parameters like, uh, no, pull here, say which database you want. Postgres, easy, excellent. Uh, define the version size, which databases you want inside of that PostgreSQL server. Uh, secrets, this is important because this database will be managed from the management cluster, but I don't need the authentication there. I need somewhere else. I need it in that newly created cluster. So move the secret over there to the uh, management cluster and finally create the schema for my database, right? Everything is a simple manifest. Uh, by the way, for the schema, I'm using Atlas uh, operator, cool tool as well. I'm using many tools today. Anyway, uh, if I go back to the management cluster and uh, I do kubectl cut apply, I don't have time. You, you know that I would show you that how to apply it and then say that I created the database last night as well. Um, so I'm going to, no, cross plane beta trace SQL claim, right? Uh, imagine that I, I, I created that, applied that manifest right now. I did it last night, and you would get something like this. All the AWS resources and all the secrets moved around, and everything you need for the data is ready for you as a developer. You would never look at this as if you're a developer, right? This is for ops people just to know what's happening behind the scenes. Now, to prove you that all that happened, I'm going to export, uh, what am I, DB? Uh, no, PG user, there we go. I'm going to uh, get uh, the username and the password and the host from the secret that was generated after the database was created. Uh, and uh, I'm going to kubectl run. I'm going to run post PSQL client in a, in a, in a container inside of my cluster, and uh, I'm going to execute. No, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm too lazy. I'm going to copy the command here. There we go. Look at that. Um, going to connect to the database server from this uh, container. And if I do L, you remember how I specified the schema and everything? And the databases, I specified my DB was created in that server. That's great. I didn't have to do anything. If I connect to that, no, there we go. If I connect to that uh, database inside that Postgres, there we go. And if I do DT, you will see tables, uh, comments and videos, two tables created. Those are the tables that are specified in the schema. Everything just works, right? Uh, very easy for developers, very easy for if you want to shift left, if you're a platform engineer, whatever you are. So, okay, so now I'm ready, right? Um, I have, a, I have a cluster that people will pretend doesn't exist because I'm doing serverless. And uh, I have a database that could have been created by anybody. And the only thing I need now is to uh, deploy that function that I showed you at the very beginning. Function YAML, this is what you saw before, very easy. Uh, the image doesn't exist, right? I'm just, going to, I'm just giving it my code and nothing else. Uh, so I'm going to say kubectl, uh, no, which cluster am I now? Uh, am I in production cluster? Uh, probably not. Export kubeconfig. Going to switch to the new cluster just to be sure. Okay, kubectl dash dash namespace production apply whatever is defined in function.yaml, right? This is all you would do. Actually, you should get fired if you ever execute a command like this. You should literally be fired. If you're in my company, I would fire you, if they would allow me to fire people. Uh, you should be pushing it to Git, right? You should be doing Git of Sargo CD, Flux, all the jazz, right? Don't, don't interact with clusters directly. Uh, this is for demo purposes only. Don't do this at home. Uh, kubectl, namespace, get functions, right? You will see now it's building. It's building the image because it fetched already the source code from my Git repository. Uh, I'm a developer again now. Uh, it is building my image. It will take probably a couple of more seconds, maybe a minute, something like this. 
eventually it will uh, it will work, probably. And until that happens, you will need to enjoy uh, uncomfortable silence because I don't know what to tell you while waiting for this. Uh, I'm just going to go bold and pretend that you're not here and just repeat the same command over and over and over again. But then I'm, 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 I'm very skilled in Linux, and then I'm going to say I, c I can do this, <laughs> right? But then you run into problem, then I cannot watch the screen now. I need to watch you, and I don't know what to say. Um, OK, let's do this. Uh, I have a couple of commands here prepared. I'm going to copy it, right? Um, I'm going to uh, define the URL of the, date of the application. It follows a certain pattern. Cool. Uh, and uh, I'm going to see now, this, is it working? Come on. This is very, very disappointing. Um, eventually, when it works, I should be able to execute this command. This command will go to my application, uh, and uh, it will send a request to insert something into a database. And if it all works, and by the way, uh, what I'm not showing you, actually, uh, I'll show you later, right? Uh, that open function uh, application, among other things, has Dapper that already knows how to connect to the database, so I don't need to think about secrets and none of those things. As a user, let's see whether it works. If it works, I just don't know how to design applications. If it's empty, it means no errors. You don't, don't get confused with, with that. Um, <laughs> what can I say? Um, and there we go, right? And I send another request to the application to to retrieve all the data from the database, and you can see that it retrieved what I got there, right? So it works. And I did very little. I mean, I showed you a lot. <laughs> what makes you think that I'm finished? <laughs> I'm kidding. No, you can do it. That's fine. Um, so let's, uh, let's see something more interesting, right? Uh, uh, dash namespace get pods, right? How many pods I have in this application running right now? One. Right? So what I'm going to do is this. Uh, echo, I forgot already, uh, up URL. What is the URL, URL of the application? This one. I'm going to take this URL, and I'm going to go to Dedosify. I don't know if any of you use Dedosify is a performance testing uh, tool. Very cool. You should be using it if you're not. Uh, I'm going to create a new test, performance test. I'm going to call it, is this big enough? Do you see it? Yes, you do. Test one, I'm going to send a request to this address. And I'm going to say that I don't want your help. Um, I'm going to how much? 100,000. I'm going bold here. I'm going to send requests from everywhere in the world. And mostly because they gave me unlimited credits, so I don't need to pay for it myself. Um, and I'm going to start the, no, I need to give it a name, test one. There we go. And I'm going to start the testing, right? And um, you will see that now it is sending requests to my application. This is very poorly written application. It will ultimately fail for sure. Uh, if it doesn't, I will get pleasantly surprised. Uh, anyways, uh, it's sending requests. And the reason why I'm doing all that, I want to show you the pods. You remember there was one pod of the application. Now there are many pods of the application, right? It scales up and down. Now the fact that it's crashing, that's my code. That's not fault of Knative or Open Function, right? But it scales automatically up, and eventually it will scale down uh, when the requests stop coming. It's just serverless, right? It goes up, it goes down. Um, and what else can I show you? The, the, yeah, those are the pods, cool. Uh, I can show you the code of the application because it's very, very complex. Uh, no, it's not really, but what I did want to show is that my code of the application is using Dapper, so it just uh, says, I don't know where the database is and stuff like that, but just connect to it wherever it is because uh, the secret is already mounted when I created a cluster and all that stuff, right? Uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, now I'm finished.
I don't know if I confused you or helped you in any form or way, probably the former. But anyways, uh, whatever time is left, you can ask any questions. Um, I'm probably supposed to tell you that I work in Upbound. But I'm giving away books tomorrow. If you want to come at uh, happy hour, just come and you get the book for free. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. That's it. I was probably supposed to tell you also something about Upbound, but uh, I forgot. Anyways, questions? Somebody? Nobody? Anybody? Close the door. Don't let them out. <laughs> Any questions? Who? You. Go. Uh, there, uh, uh, there is application for sure. There is, uh, I, I think that there are two pod, two containers. If I'm not mistaken, application and Dapper. Dapper attaches itself, and uh, when when application sends request to the database, it actually goes to the sidecar, and then Dapper figures out wherever that is. Kind of magic type of stuff. Yes, please. So. Oh, when it starts with so, it never ends up well. I'm kidding. Go. Lambda. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so there are there are reasons why you. So the question, just in case others, why, why did I do it myself instead of using service like Lambda or? Uh, my first option is always to use something as a service, right? So if you can afford, uh, don't use Lambda. But if you can afford Google Cloud Run or uh, no, I'm kidding. Lambda is fine. Um, if you can afford something as a service, like I'm using database as a service, do it always, right? Now, there are some reasons why you might want to set it up yourself. You have more control of what's happening. It tends to be cheaper. Uh, and it tends to maybe better integrate with what you have inside of your cluster, because not everything might, might be serverless and so on and so forth. So, but today, I'm not trying to judge kind of like do, do it self-managed or service, uh, just showing that you can do it as a self-managed option as well for whatever reasons, especially if you're not in cloud. But if you're not in cloud, go to cloud. Yes, definitely. In private cloud, you're definitely not, not going to use uh, public Lambda. Yes. Anybody else? Yes, I see a hand there. I'm blinded by the light, so it's not that I'm ignoring you. So the question is, and correct me if I'm wrong, what are the limits of uh, scalability and so on and so forth of uh, Knative? Basically, you can configure it yourself to begin with. Uh, by default, for example, it creates a replica for every 100 requests, not immediately, but if over a certain period of time. Um, so you can configure that. You can configure quite a few other things. You can specify, like, never go below this number or never go above that. So you can say 50 replicas is my maximum. Don't go over that. So it's highly configurable, Knative itself. Uh, and then the limits are also on the hardware side, but probably your cluster, that's less of a limit because you probably your cluster is coming out of scaling, at least if you're using clusters as a service. Uh, and, and that's important, right? Since unlike functions as a service, this is like containers as a service. So even if you need to wait for a minute until a new node is created for additional capacity, your existing pods can still probably handle that additional load for a while, so it should be quite fine. Anybody else? No, I'm not allowed to speak anymore. Thank you so much.